So now the lacing's been finished. We got all the way to the end, and we have just two pieces here. So the next step is we've got a steel rod that's been bent uh, into a ring, welded, one end, and then it's been painted. I can't see that. It's been painted with white, uh, glossy, uh, a white primer, a white metal primer. So the head, the ring sits in the middle of the head here, and we're going to lubricate the, the ring so that the, as we tighten the head, it slides easily over the ring. Now the lubricant's not strictly necessary for doing this, but it helps the head slide as you tension it. And every little bit helps because this is a fairly difficult process. Okay, so once the head is lubricated, now we're going to start tightening up these the string here to fold the head over the ring. So we find where we started, where this uh, knot is. We take that one and we pull the slack out of the first one, partway. We work our way around all 29 holes, pulling the slack out of this line. All right, so one pass of completely tension of pulling the slack out has been done. Now, this is obviously not tight. Um, it's just starting to fold over. It's going to take two or three passes all the way around to get the head folded flat over the ring. What you want to do as you do this is try to keep the head, the ring centered in the head as you pull that slack out and try to make sure that it pulls as evenly as possible. So now, so you don't have to do it all in one pass, that's the point. So now I'm going to do another round of tensioning. And as you can see, this is my second round, and as I pull down, the head is now coming uh, close. It's meeting on both sides. So when I get done with this pass, it'll be pretty much flat, and I'll just do one more pass to tension it up. Now I've finished the second round of tensioning the head, you can see that the head is folded over the ring and is lying somewhat flat against it. And again, the rough side of the head is to the inside when you fold this over. The smooth side is on the outside. Um, it's very important to uh, double check that at each move. So I tied a loop using that length of string that we had left over with the knot. And the string that I have left over after lacing through, I'm going to run through the end of this and use that to tension it. And that's going to hold the tension in the head. Now, I'm going to tie just a simple little loop knot to keep it from coming loose. But this is something that I can easily pull um, off so that uh, I can untie it and retension it at each step. You don't want to tie off to this loop uh, too strongly, because if you do, then you're not going to be able to get it untied when you have to do the next round of tensioning. So now I'm going to work my way around, starting at this knot again a third time, and get this all tensioned down so it lays flat. And again, as you keep doing this, this is a good time to make sure that you recenter the ring inside of the head because every time you tension it, it gets harder and harder to move that ring around. Okay, so now we've gone around a third time and put a little bit of tension on the head. So you can see that there's we're starting to get a little bit of stretch here. Um, and I've taped my fingers 
on the places where I tend to, to put in here pull, because if you're not careful, the twine will cut into your fingers. You can wear gloves while you do this, but um, I find that wearing gloves makes it hard to get my fingers in um, and grab the right uh, piece of twine here to pull hard on. So um, taping seems to be the best option. So the reason we've got 29 holes around the perimeter is to spread the load out so that each one of these holes uh, isn't taking out, it doesn't have too much pressure on it. Uh, because if we're not careful, uh, the, the wet head can rip in these. We've already got the holes turning a little white where they're stretching. And I've worked on recentering the ring again after each round of tension. Now that we're getting to this point, it's going to start getting very difficult to recenter the ring at all inside of the head, even with the lubricant. So now that thing is laying pretty flat, we're going to go and do a fourth round of tensioning, starting again where the knot is, and taking out as much slack as possible. And then we're going to move on to stretching the head. Alright, so now that we've got to the point where we're actually going to put our fourth round of tension in, uh, we're going to zoom in a little so you can see how this is done. At each point, um, each round of tensioning, we're trying to do a lot of them so that we're not putting undue strain at any point. If you try to, you could, you could probably do this all in one or two steps instead of four or five or six, but it, it increases the likelihood that your head's going to rip. And uh, this particular head is a little on the thin side, um, especially on this end. So if we pull too hard, it's likely to rip. So. You know, I identify my knot here and take a look, and I find the cord that runs between this and that fifth one. And I give it a little pull here, not too hard, but just to get a little slack out of it. And then I find the next one in line, give that one a little pull. And I'm just going to keep rotating the head around like this as I pull the next cord, trying to maintain the tension at each step so that I can pull it all the way out. Again, you want to be careful not to put too much tension at any given time on any one of these holes, because if you do, you could potentially rip it. There are other methods for fastening the rope to the head, uh, ones that use pegs um, and distribute the load a little better than all of these holes, but they are more difficult, in my opinion, than unnecessary. This is pretty effective and not that difficult. So you can see as I tend, as I pull on these, the reason why I have the tape in that spot. If uh, you didn't have the tape on your fingers as you pulled on this, this line would probably well, it eventually cuts in to your skin, and uh, the blood doesn't come out of the head very easily. It'll leave a stain. All right, at this point, we're going to stop and we're going to point out um, what we're trying to do here. So you can see that the head is fairly translucent and how it's wet right now. We really haven't put any significant tension on this head yet. It's still uh, uh, fairly, has a lot of slack in it. But you can see around the edge here, um, as we pull this tight, um, the part of the head that gets stretched the most at first is the part around the rim. And the head is starting to turn white around the rim. And this whiteness is what we're looking for, trying to get the entire head to turn white like this. Now, that is a fairly difficult um, goal, and you have to be careful. At some point, you have to um, stop pulling on the head to keep it from ripping. Um, so it may not turn completely white, but uh, the head itself will stop being translucent. It will, it will turn white in some areas, and that's the fibers of the skin breaking. And as the and the more fibers of the skin that you break, the more pliable the head will be when it dries, and it will make a much more pleasing sound. 